What's up, folks? Maximilian here, and welcome back to another Real Talk episode. We usually switch these up between arcade stories and Real Talk. And this one, I wanted to take take a topic that has been, uh, I've actually talked about, I think, way in the past, and a long time ago, maybe in an episode of The Online Warrior back in 2011 or something like that. But what I wanted to bring up this time is that similar topic, which is the necessity and the, uh, how badly you need to use an arcade stick for something like fighting games. Now, this question probably comes up more frequently than anything, and I'll cover a few things here that have actually been talked about um, that I that have been asked for a multitude of times throughout videos throughout the entire year, and I'll just sum it up into one video. Um, for you guys that have been constantly asking about this, an arcade stick is a tool to play fighting games that can make it somewhat easier for a certain crowd to be good at a fighting game. The biggest advantage to an arcade stick is that you have all the buttons that would normally be on a controller perfectly laid out from left to right on one side of your arcade stick. Um, this is really easy when it comes to games that require very heavy timing execution and combos because the muscle memory of actually tapping buttons ends up being a lot easier for guys like me and many other players when using something like a joystick. Uh, however, this is not the case for everybody. The most frequent question I get is, Max, I've been playing on a controller for a long time as fighting games. I'm not getting any better. Should I switch to stick? There is a there is a chance, a small minute chance, that if you do switch to arcade stick, things might actually make more sense for you. What you might notice is that moving around with your character, depending on what controller you were using, if it's an Xbox pad, well, those are pretty bad. Um, you, you're going to have a better time moving around with your character, probably, because the D-pad you don't have to deal with anymore. And you're probably going to have a better time using the buttons and stuff like that as well. This is where I personally found success using an arcade stick, was way back in the day when I had to switch. I didn't have a choice because all the games that I wanted to play, all the fighting games that I loved were in the arcade and I had to get good with an arcade stick. And I just learned a trial by fire and lost a ton of games because of this. Um, but before that I was accustomed to playing with a PlayStation controller. I didn't like the SNES controller for fighting games at all really, even though I used it. I really hate the fact that you have to ma navigate the D-pad and use your index finger on your left hand to use like the L button for a fierce punch. No deal, man. I really did not like that at all. But when it came to the PlayStation controller, things were much easier with the uh, the two buttons on the shoulders and then the four face buttons because you had a full six-button layout on the right side of the controller, which is similar to how an arcade stick works, right? You have all the buttons in one area, and that's why it works out. You guys that might be having trouble with fighting games, this will probably not fix your issues. Uh, an arcade stick will only add on top of the existing problems you might be having with controlling your character and things like that. Uh, a lot of the times what you need to develop is a thing called muscle memory, which is understanding we're getting into the habit of doing this combo or this move or this chain of attacks or whatever it might be on an arcade stick or a controller either way and just getting used to that motion with your hands. Your hands actually need to remember what that feels like constantly and doing it over and over again. Uh, the arcade stick won't fix this either. What it actually does and, and ends up doing is hampering your ability to go any further because you have to like learn more muscle memory. But if you stick with it, if you keep going with it, and you actually keep playing with an arcade stick, it will make more sense. It will start to be like, oh, this is actually working out a lot better here. But for you guys that are miraculously looking for something that'll like take you from going to completely average player with a controller to completely like way better with an arcade stick, it's not gonna happen. An arcade stick is complete personal preference. There are players that do extremely well in all levels of competitive fighting games that use arcade sticks and controllers and they fight against each other at full 100% capacity for both. Same thing with Ultimate Marvel 3, there are guys that have stuck with controllers and they're just fan-freaking-tastic. You cannot judge somebody by how good they are based off they're using an arcade stick or a controller. It's like... It's like using a utensil, you know? I It's like when you, when you eat food with either a fork or chopsticks, like, which one do you think is better? Like, chopsticks might be more satisfying because it feels like it's harder to eat the food if you're not used to chopsticks, and a fork might feel like it's a lot easier to get the food, but it's the same thing with arcade stick and controller. If it feels like something's more difficult to do with an arcade stick, it might actually end up feeling more satisfying for you in the end than something like a controller, and that's actually the case with me, is that I like the fact that I have to hit all these buttons, and there's a lot of movement involved, you know? It's not like just, just your thumbs or your index fingers with a controller. I like the fact that there's a lot of motion going on in your left hand, there's a lot of motion and tapping going on in your right, and there's a lot of, like, kinetic movement, and you gotta get your blood flowing to play with an arcade stick, and your, gun your hands might be sore at the end if you're not 
even if you're not used to it. I kind of like that because it reminds me of the arcades. It's a nostalgia thing. It definitely is. And Arcade 6 definitely had a boom once the Street Fighter 4 games were out. People were like, well, I gotta go with, like, the old style. I gotta go with Arcade Sticks. Well, this is also hugely in fact that the Xbox controller was total bupkis. And the PlayStation controller was not too bad. And people wanted an alternative to both. Um, any of you guys that might be asking, what sticks do I use and what I would recommend you using? Uh, personally, I've been using Mad Cat sticks for ever since they've come out with the Street Fighter 4 line of arcade sticks. Um, I've had I've had some issues with some breaking on me, but that kind of happens if you beat things up quite a bit and you play the games a lot. Uh, but they're very fixable. They're very modif like they're they're widely open to modification. If you guys are looking for some decent arcade sticks, what you can do is probably follow Markman, who's like lead community guy over at uh, Mad Cats. Follow him on Twitter or just look up Markman on Twitter. You'll find him, and he does promotions for arcade sticks all the time. Um, Mad Cats has a huge different line of arcade stick types, and also does Hori and stuff like that, but I mostly see these promotions through Mad Cats. So if you guys are looking for a cheap stick, do not, I repeat, do not go to Amazon or go to eBay and buy one of these weird third-party, like, sticks that seems a little iffy, is made by some company you've never heard of before, or sold by just, like, maybe some, some guy that has a really cheap arcade stick. And with arcade sticks, you pay for what you get. And you need to you need to come to grips that 50 bucks most likely is not going to get you an arcade stick that'll last very long or perform very well. It also depends on what you want, like with old Japanese-style arcade sticks, which is how the Mad Cats ones are, or the old bat stick gigantic, like, you know, they look like a baseball bat stick, uh, which are American sticks. You need to make the choice, so there are, there are plenty of options out there now, and tons of guys that'll make arcade sticks for you, but... They are a little expensive. Um, arcade sticks can run anywhere between $150 to $200. And on any lucky day, you might actually be able to pick up one of these, like, Mad Cat Street Fighter Cross Tekken, you know, sticks for about $100. bucks. i have seen them on sale several times for that amount. My personal stick that I've been using, and I absolutely love it, I like an arcade stick that has a lot of girth to it, that actually feels really heavy when it sits in your lap because it moves around the least. Uh, one of my personal favorite sticks besides that was some of the old Agitech Dreamcast arcade sticks, which were called the Green Goblins back in the day, and they were fantastic. They were really good. I actually had three or four of them, and uh, I modified a few of them. I made them heavier and things like that. That's one of the nice things about the Mad Cat sticks is that they're heavy mod heavily modifiable, and you can do whatever you want. But what's nice about the, uh, I think it's the Tournament Edition Versus Stick for Street Fighter Cross Tekken. It's a very heavy, like, unit that just sits in your lap and doesn't move around, and that's what I like the most about it. It's got a lot of room for people with big hands and everything like that. So if you guys are looking for a stick that I like to use, check out the Tournament Edition. I think it's the Versus Stick for the Street Fighter Cross Tekken line. But I got a pretty good deal on mine when there was a promotion during a tournament for Mad Cats, um, because I was following Markman, and I got, like, 50 bucks off or something crazy like that and it was only like 140 or 150 and normally is $200. So uh, hopefully that guys help that helps you out. This is also what you need to understand my personal advice. This is not gospel. There'll be plenty of other top players that completely swear to arcade sticks and that they're completely better. But what you need to think about is yourself. And a lot of the times if you switch from something that you've been playing with so long and you're already good with controller it might not be the best idea to switch to arcade stick, or it might be. It might actually change things for you, but you got to realize that you're going to have to put in the work. It's not going to become immediately like there's this light bulb that just goes ding as soon as you put your hands on a joystick and buttons. It'll take a while. It'll take a while to figure out where those buttons are, how you need to move the joystick, and how to make sense of this with the character on the screen. So, like I said, hopefully you guys have a little bit of information from this that'll help you out when you make an arcade stick purchase in the future. But uh, for myself, I am definitely an arcade stick player. When I try to play fighting games with a controller, uh, especially non-3D style fighting games, oh my god, does it feel weird because I grew up in the arcades with nothing but sticks. If you guys enjoyed this episode of Real Talk, please let me know in the comments below, and if there's something or a topic of discussion regarding fighting games, the community, or the history of fighting games that you would like me to cover, uh, let me know below as well, and I'll try to tackle that in a later episode. My name is Maximilian, and I'll see you next week.